Hello, everyone, and welcome to our panel on funding. Um, I'm Sarah Dillon from the RAP Fund, and I have the pleasure today of chatting to Orla Clancy from Creative Europe Desk Ireland from the Media Programme and Francesca Walker from the BFI UK's Global Screen Fund. Um, just a couple of bits of housekeeping before we get going, because I know everybody wants to get into knowing how to get the money. Um, first off, congratulations to all the team at Docs Ireland for putting together this great festival again this year. We all know it's no mean feat in the current circumstances. I think it's been, um, I've had a really interesting morning. I had the pleasure of being at the meat market and meeting some really interesting filmmakers with new projects. And I think it's a, an exceptional programme this year. Uh, and also, if you do want to get involved in this panel, if you have questions, please make sure to submit them into the chat function here and we'll put your questions to Francesca and Orla. And also, if you do want to comment or follow us along on social media, make sure to tag Docs Ireland um, and we can be part of an online debate about everything that's going on. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce Francesca first. As I said, she's from the BFI, the new fund of the BFI, the UK Global Screen Fund. And she actually is going to introduce herself and then have, we have a small promo as well just so that you can get a sense of everything that's happening. Yep, do you want to run the film first and I'll get started with the presentation? Sure. Stuart, I think is out. <laughs> I didn't mean for you to see that. Oh my god. I'd like to know the truth. Do you think I could have tea with you? Okay, I will try and share my screen. Should now be able to see that. Um, so hi everyone, welcome. Um, my name is Francesca Walker um, and I'm one of the managers working on the new UK Global Screen Fund, which launched at the end of April this year. Um, I'll warn you now, there's a lot of text on these slides because um, we've got a lot of information to pack in, but I can make them available to anyone that wants them um, after the session, so do let me know. Um, so what is the UK Global Screen Fund? It's a new £7 million pilot fund financed by the UK government's Department for Digital Culture, Media and Sport and delivered by the BFI. Um, the fund has three main overarching aims. It's, it's really about increasing revenues for UK companies, increasing inter international partnerships, and increasing the reach of UK screen content amongst international audiences. So there's three open access strands that make up the fund. Um, each have been developed with consultation from the industry. Um, and I'm gonna use this session to give you an overview of the aims and the eligibility for each one. So two strands are already published, with the third due to go live next week. Um, and as you can see, we already have deadlines coming up throughout the summer. So the international distribution strand will close at the end of this month. International business development uh, is open until the 16th of July. And then the international co-production strand will launch on Tuesday next week and uh, will close on the 17th of August. Um, you can also see on this slide the maximum awards we can make under each strand. Um, and it's worth bearing in mind that all of these um, awards are made as non-recoupable grants. It's also worth bearing in mind, especially if you're thinking of applying for more than one uh, strand, that a total cap also applies across the UK Global Screen Fund. So the total a company can receive um, across three years is capped at £340,000. In addition to the open access strands, there are also two other elements to the fund. Um, so there is, um, hopefully launching in the autumn, we will have an international promotional campaign um, that will aim to engage global audiences and really reflect the quality and diversity of UK screen content. 
Um, it'll also feature a number of industry focused events and, and training elements as well. Um, and research has already begun on a global data hub. So we're kind of looking into what sort of data the sector needs and wants, uh, and really using this pilot year to explore the possibility of providing international data that can help financiers, content creators, sales agents, distributors to make better informed decisions and really enhance the, the global opportunities that are available to them. So two things I want to mention before we delve into the sort of specifics of each strand. Uh, one is the UK-wide prioritization that we've built into the fund. So all three strands um, are working to the similar weighted assessment criteria. I won't go into each a breakdown for each of these per strand in this session, but I wanted to highlight one criteria that does have the same weighting and a similar definition across all three strands, and that's this one. Um, so we are keen to address some of the geographic imbalance within the industry and we're particularly interested in seeing applications from companies that are based outside of London. Um, in the case of the distribution scheme, uh, we'll also be looking at the location of the lead UK producer because obviously within that scheme we're only going to be supporting sales agents. Um, so we'll be looking at where the producer is based as well as the, the applicant company and the sales agent. Um, and then for the uh, co-production strand, we'll also be looking at the location of the individual producers as well as the company itself. Um, for those two strands, we'll also take into account where projects are shot or made. And across all three, we'll look at whether the film reflects the culture and talent across the UK. So that could be a regionally set story or the involvement of talent from a particular region. And of course, if you can make any other proposed a case for any of the proposed UK-wide benefits in your application and these will be taken into an account in terms of that assessment. The other sort of cross-strand criteria that I wanted to mention uh, is the 25% rules. So these apply to two areas of, of any application. Uh, one is in relation to company ownership. So we're looking to support independent UK companies and we're defining that as companies that have no more than 25% third-party ownership from one or more of the four options you can see on screen there. And the second is what we're calling the level of grant intensity. So how much funding we can put in versus other money that's available to you. Um, and this is also capped at 25%, but is defined in different ways depending on the strand. So for distribution, uh, we'll be able to fund up to 25% of your total sales costs. That's defined as the, the agreed sales cap between the, the sales agent and the distributor plus any exclusions. Um, for business development, we can fund up to 25% of a company's annual turnover, and that can include turnover of uh, re uh, related SPVs over the past three years. And for co-productions, we'd be looking to fund no more than 25% of the overall uh, UK financial contribution to the project. Um, but that can go up to 50% if, you, if the company has a strong track record in co-production and can make a persuasive case for why that amount needs to be higher. Okay, so with that in mind, let's delve a little deeper into the three strands. Um, the international distribution strand, as I mentioned, is open to UK sales agents representing UK films. Um, those films can either be packaged, so fully financed and either completed or at various stages of pre-production, production or post-production. Or they can be pre-sales with at least 50% of their financing confirmed and not yet in production. Um, the funding can go on the sales agent's own sales and marketing costs, but this strand also exists to help and provide services and create materials which can be made available for free for use by international distributors. We're really hoping that this can uh, increase the sales for these UK films, and, and as the funded activity can't be recouped by, by the sales agent, this should increase revenues for the producer. Um, for pre-sale films, the grant can also go towards the cost of entering the film into pitch sessions and talent labs, and the cost of travel and accommodation for the director, writer, or the producer to attend those events can be included. So we're aiming to grow exports and global demand for UK independent film, and we're hoping to use this fund in particular to evidence um, sales figures and impact to make the case for additional years of, the fund of funding past this pilot stage. Um, something that we'll need to do very, very soon. 
Um, as mentioned, in terms of impact, it's not just about the impact to the sales agent we're interested in here. Um, the offer of materials to distributors should help increase audiences for UK films, um, and this in turn should see an increase in commercial returns for the producers of the films. In terms of eligibility, uh, we are only funding UK-based sales agents in this pilot year. Um, they need to be appointed at the time of application, and we also ask for written consent from the lead producer of the film. Um, as I mentioned, it's all about demonstrating the impact of the funding for the producer, um, and as a result, we want them to be in, as involved in the application as possible. So we ask them to be involved in the application, and, and we will notify them if the film is selected for support. The films themselves need to have a production budget of at least um, of less than 10 million. They need to be feature length, so that's animation, fiction or documentary, all eligible if more than 60 minutes in length. Um, and they need to have qualified or be capable of qualifying as British, either through the cultural test, uh, one of the co-production treaties or the European Convention. Um, they can't be fully financed by a studio or mini major are intended for a TV or SVOD premiere. Okay, so that's the basics of how to access the strand and why it exists. Um, in terms of what we're looking for, I've given some top level points on this slide, um, but a full breakdown of the assessment criteria can be found in, in each set of guidelines. Um, basically, we're looking for films with commercial potential, international audience appeal, uh, we want to see detailed, innovative plans for the funded activity um, that's kind of alongside a wider sales strategy for the film. Uh, we want to see expenditure which represents good value for money and which will have an impact on sales. Um, we want to see how that, how that impact can be measurable in terms of its, um, the impact that will be passed on to the producers of the film. Uh, we'll be looking at the track record of the companies, making sure they've got previous success in selling UK films. Um, and we really want to see films that represent both the breadth and diversity of the UK, both on and off screen. Um, and as, in addition to that, we will be asking for um, applicants to kind of include their plans and efforts to reduce uh, carbon emissions and, and negative environmental impacts that, that kind of sits across all, all three of the strands. The next one then is international business development. Um, so this strand is closing on the 16th of July. Um, this is for UK screen content companies working in the creation, acquisition and exploitation of IP um, in the areas of fiction, animation and documentary for both film and TV. Um, and we're also including interactive narrative video game companies within this as well. So it's, it's not project funding or seed funding. Uh, we are after companies that may have had already some success in the UK and want to build on that internationally. Um, so we'll be funding business strategies that focus on revenue generation through export and international expansion. Um, in practice, this could mean things like hiring salaried or freelance staff with expertise and potentials in certain territories, for instance. It could be business operating costs that are relevant to expansion into new markets or business areas. Um, it does include project development activities um, and specifically for video games, that would be the earliest stage activities such as prototyping. Um, anything that kind of supports um, the development of relationships with international partners, any activities around that. Research um, and development into new business, uh, into new business areas. Um, and any innovative strategies uh, to help with the distribution or exploitation of IP via kind of new digital platforms. We're also interested in seeing proposals for that. So the aim of the funding is really to try and transform the businesses that um, are successful um, by supporting their international activity. We want to stimulate innovation, entrepreneurship and risk taking. And as I mentioned at the start, and with all three of the strands, we really want the impact of this funding to be felt across the four nations of the UK. And it really is about taking the international plans for your company to the next level. Um, by funding this, this activity, we're hoping to see companies with a strong presence in the international marketplace, quality UK projects and talent aimed for the international marketplace, new business partnerships and alliances, 
new international revenue streams and private sector investment and, and real targeted development, production, sales, distribution and marketing strategies, which will help exploit new opportunities. So the eligibility for this is fairly broad. Um, but as I've said, it's not for startup companies. So we are looking for companies that have at least two years of accounts filed at Companies House. Um, at least one director of the company needs to have been a director for at least three years. Um, specifically, we're looking to fund micro and small enterprises, and, and you can kind of find information about definitions for those within the guidelines. It's, it's linked to kind of company size and turnover. Um, but we will also fund medium sized enterprises um, if that relates to kind of scaling up for a specific production, for instance, in animation or games. Uh, when the company needs to expand. Um, and the companies that we support need to be engaged in cr the creation, exploitation or acquisition of UK screen IP. So it is really broad. We're kind of dealing with lots of different sectors and um, company types. Um, but yeah, the support is there to kind of help you grow internationally. Um, so yeah, we're looking for ambitious strategies. We want to see um, companies with some track record coming to us that are looking to grow, um, internationally focused plans, and uh, a real breadth of company types across the UK screen sector, as I said, is quite a varied fund. So we do want to support as many different types of company as possible. Uh, you've got to come to us with kind of clearly costed business strategies um, for that three year plan and, and tangible KPIs that kind of fit into our aims and objectives. Uh, we're asking you to kind of come up with those yourself as part of the application. Uh, diversification we're interested in, so companies moving from one sector to another, maybe you've got a track record in feature film, but you want to move into TV. Um, keen to see projects that work uh, on those lines. Um, and obviously innovation and creativity are gonna be part of the assessment as well. Final strand then is our international co-production strand <clears throat> due to open next Tuesday uh, with a deadline on the 17th of August. Um, for the most part, as with the other strands, we'll be assessing applications after the deadline. Um, but if your project does have an urgent timeline and you intend to start shooting before so the end of October this year, uh, then do submit your application as soon as you can and kind of give like if you clearly highlight your kind of timetable Ooh. sorry about that hopefully you can see that again now um yeah if, if you do have a kind of timetable that you need to work to quicker submit your application as soon as possible and let us know and we we have reserved the right to kind of take a look at those um applications a little bit earlier and, and make some funding decisions um sooner if needed um so here we are spotting uk production companies um and specifically we're looking for companies with a producer that can demonstrate a track record so they need to have a credit as a producer on a project that has had commercial distribution um, or a broadcast either in the UK or internationally. Uh, we can fund feature film co-productions where the UK is a minority partner. That's across fiction, animation and documentary projects. Uh, for TV projects, we're only supporting documentaries and animations in this pilot year, um, and they can either be minority or majority co-productions. Um, Post-production can be supported if it includes creative elements, so it wouldn't cover completion funding for technical elements, for instance, but it can be um, supported otherwise if the creative elements are there. Um, and the grant needs to be spent on the UK elements of the production. Ooh. Again, our focus is on exports and international distribution potential and the potential to generate revenues for the UK producer. Uh, we're hoping to see the number of international co-productions involving the UK increase with this funding. Uh, we want to support and encourage UK producers to work as partners on international co-productions that may have originated elsewhere. Um, this should help increase the visibility, the level of financial and creative input, the revenues and the international track record of the UK producers. 
um, and enable global reach. Um, it will support UK producers, hopefully, to collaborate with international partners, both in new markets that they may not have worked in before, um, but also we want to strengthen ties with existing international partners in familiar markets, um, thereby supporting the kind of reciprocal relationships. In addition to that company eligibility and the track record, uh, there are some eligibility requirements in terms of the projects that are submitted to this street strand. So we can support both official and unofficial co-productions. Um, because this is a pilot year, we do have some restrictions on timings. So for documentaries, we ask that projects are completed before the end of next year. 60% of your finance must be in place. Um, and there must be at least one additional UK funding source in a, addition to the UK Global Screen Fund and any UK tax relief that you're claiming. Um, so that can include any UK-wide um, BFI funds, the BFI Doc Society funding or the BFI Film Fund support for co-production. But it can include sort of national and regional funds, uh, such as Northern Ireland Screen, for example. Uh, the film must qualify as British, again, either through one of the co-production treaties, the European Convention, or through the cultural test. Um, and for TV projects, there's animations and documentaries. Uh, we ask that you either have um, three broadcasters attached if the UK is a majority partner, and two broadcasters if it's a minor minority partner in the co-production. Okay, last slide, uh, a quick overview of what we're looking for for uh, the co-production strand. Um, projects that make persuasive cases, um, again, it's about international audience and market appeal. Um, they need to be able to show international distribution and revenue potential. Again, we're looking at either accessing new markets or strengthening ties with existing markets improving the reciprocity um, between the UK and other nations in co-production. Uh, we will be looking at the track record of the teams, so teams that can demonstrate success either at a festival or through awards, box office viewing figures, that will be taken into account. And, and that level of third party financing you have in respect of the UK co-production share will be, will be assessed as well. Um, we're really keen to hear from Northern Irish based companies that might be eligible. So do contact us if you've got any questions. Um, the email on the screen goes to the whole team and is monitored daily. So it will be picked up and passed on um, to the relevant person. Uh, I work specifically on the distribution strand and then my colleague Attica is working on the co-production strand. And then the rest of the team, the whole team is kind of involved in the business development strand as well. So. It, it will get passed on to the right person um, if you contact us via that email. I've also included the link to our website, which you can get to um, under the funding and industry section of the BFI website. Um, and it's always good, read through the full guidelines. On that website, there's, there's a page for each of the different strands. We've got full guidelines on the previews of the application forms, um, all the documents you would need for an application. We've also got a um, events page on there. So we've got a number of events coming up um, over the next few weeks um, and we're constantly adding to that as well. So there will be kind of strand specific webinars and sessions you can attend where you can kind of delve a little bit more into the application process and what's required. Um, and yeah, as it is a pilot fund, we're keen to hear your feedback really. We're, we're about to start preparing um, for the next UK government spending review. Um, so we'll be submitting a bid, or DCMS will be submitting a bid that we'll be feeding into um, to hopefully run the fund past its pilot year and into future years. So very keen to hear your thoughts on, on what a future fund could look like. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Francesca. And again, don't forget if you have questions specifically for Francesca, get them into the comments section and we'll get come back to them at the end. So next up is a lady that probably doesn't need any introduction, particularly to our Irish uh, viewers here today. So Orla is in Dublin with the Creative York Media Desk. And as people know, they've just about they have launched their new seven year program. But uh, there's a number of streams within that. So she's going to demystify those for us through her presentation. So we might show um, Orla's trailer first and then we'll come back to you Orla, to share your presentation. Great.
Oh, we're back to you, Orla. I think you also have PowerPoints. So you're going to go through some of the. I do have a PowerPoint. That was our promo uh, for the last seven years of the, the, the program that I finished last year. And the new one has finally hit, uh, a bit delayed, but it's, um, it's here now. So I'm just going to fly through it. It's a huge program. So bear with me. Okay. Now. Great. So everybody can see that. Lovely. So. Oh. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so the new program has kicked off, um, literally launched oh, probably last week, week before. The protocols still aren't live yet, so bear with us. It's a whole new system, new application system, um, which I know everybody is excited about and not. Um, it's a little cumbersome, but uh, but we'll get there. Um, so the calls aren't live yet, but, but they will be shortly. Um, so I'm just going to fly through this. And for first of all, I just want to say hi to Francesca, who was the Creative Europe, was me in London, basically. For many years, she was part of the Creative Europe team um, in London. So it's great that we can work together. And again, so as you know, the UK isn't involved, isn't part of the Creative Europe program this time. Um, but I will try and, and point you in directions on how you can still be involved, um, particularly for Northern Irish companies. So and just to say that in the last seven years, I said that 13 million went to the to Irish companies, um, down south, and then but two million, nearly two million went to Northern Irish companies. Um, I think it was nearly one point two million on the media strand alone. So, um, so yeah, so it was a good, it was it was strong for 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 Northern Ireland. So, okay, so the new program is two point four four billion. So it's a big jump. The last program, last seven year program, was one point four six billion. So it's uh, it's got a bit of a funding boost, which is great. Um, so with the funding boost, it, it the program has just become bigger. Like it's a bit of a monster now, which is great. Uh, so the, the vision of the funding is similar to last time. So 56% to media, um, 36 for culture, and then uh, cross-sector standards, 13. It's a huge program. So I, I'll try and, and just skim over a lot of it. So the main issues of this one, so there's increased co-funding for projects as part of this. So um, last time it was, for a lot of the schemes, there was a 50% match funding uh, limit. So in some of the schemes now, it's up to 80%. So it depends on the funding call that you're going for because they really do understand that the companies are struggling. Um, so, so they are trying to help um, in that way. So the program, it's aligned with the EU agenda of sustainability and greening of the industry and also diversity and inclusion. And this is across all, all funding calls. So there is a new award criteria. You will get extra five points um, for each of these. If you can show in your strategies, either in your content or in the strategies of the company and um, how you are dealing with these with these issues. Another major um, plus for this for this uh, program is that there's new cross-sectoral supports on news media. So it's it's a whole new area that has fought, come under the, the Creative Europe umbrella now. Um, so there's a call launched for journalism partnerships. So um, the idea is to, is to create these pan-European journalism partnerships to combat um, fake news and uh, disinformation and, and, and really, you know, help boost quality journalism. So that's all new. So for the media priorities, like I said, it's resilience and recovery, uh, collaboration across borders, nurturing talents, out uh, training, really, um, digital transformation, of course, and then greening and diversity as well. So there's a lot of schemes. So I'm going to fly through. So the funding clusters, it's divided into three now. So there's audience, business, and content now. So in the audience, there's networks of European cinemas, which is Europa Cinemas, as, as you all will be uh, familiar with, so that's still going strong. Uh, European festivals, European VOD networks and operators, Films on the Move, which is the old selective distribution scheme. Um, so, and that's really focused on, on sales agents, um, and then distributors will get funding through those sales agents who, who get funded. There's audience development and film education, and then subtitling of cultural content as well. So on the business side of it, Fostering European media talent and skills, which is training. Uh, there's markets and networking. There's European film distribution and sales, innovative tools and business models. And then the area that I'm going to be focusing on is content. So this is to encourage collaboration and innovation in the creation and production of high quality works. So in fiction, the same as before, it's in fiction, animation and creative documentary. So in this, there's four, there's this year, there's four, um, for funding costs, there's European co-development, 
which I will talk about in a second. Uh, there's European Slate Development, which I will also talk about, and there's European Mini Slate, which doesn't apply to us. It is specifically for um, companies in low capacity countries. So they're smaller slates with, with um, smaller amount of funding and is to help boost those companies in those countries. And then there's TV and online content, which is the TV programming scheme of before. So we'll go through the European co-development. European co-development has replaced the old single project development scheme. Um, they figured that there are now, when media started back in the day, there was very little development funding across Europe. And now pretty much every territory, every country has their own, um, has their own development schemes for the industry. So in order to complement that, they, they have decided to run this co-development scheme. So it's to nurture talent, competence and skills and it's to stimulate cross-border co cooperation and also collaboration across member states with different audiovisual capacities. Again, it's trying to get the larger countries working with smaller countries to help boost the, the, the smaller countries. So it really is about building the industry like on a, on a pan-European level. So because it's a brand new scheme, uh, the deadline isn't until November 17th, which you'd be glad to hear, um, because it'll take time for, for us all to get our heads around this one. The main part about this is that the application is by a project leader um, and at least one other company from at least, so the, and at least one other company from at least two different media countries. So you have to have a co-development agreement with a company from another media country. Um, and that co-development agreement must be in place. Um, so that can, in some scenarios, I know that that can be difficult for, for some companies who don't want to go into development agreements that early, um, but, but, but this is the, the scheme that's here. So the funding available is maximum 60,000 per partners for, for documentary, um, then that's per partner. So if you've got a very big documentary, um, it could be for, um, you know, 120, so it's a, it's a lot, it's a, it's a, it's a good bit of money. And uh, the duration for the Creative Europe documentary projects are 60 minutes for cinema, 50 minutes for TV, and with interactive VR, there's no minimum. So um, it can only be a few, it can be a few minutes long because of the, the nature of the work. So the track record has slightly changed as well. Um, from from before, so you must have produced one animation, creative doc, creative doc, or fiction project of at least twenty four minutes duration, um, and this is across slate as well. They, they've they've brought down the minimum duration, which is good, and it only has to have been uh, produced since twenty fourteen. The the kicker is that it has to be commercially distributed in at least three countries other than their own. So you do have to be at a certain level uh, to be able to apply for this. So again, like before, the work can be produced by an African company or a personal on-screen producer credit of the chief exec or one, one of the shareholders. Um, this is an area I know that um, for, for Irish companies, this is very straightforward. For Northern Irish companies, it's a, it's a little tricky um, because the co only companies can, can apply. So even though shareholders of the companies would be European and would be eligible, um, the company it's the company that, um, that, that must apply. So if the company is not based in a European country, um, you won't be able to. But if there is a company that is based down south um, with uh, that is registered in CRO that has Northern Irish shareholders, then that company um, who is based down south can apply. And the new, the, the other thing about these is that there is no minimum before, in the single project funding, for example, you had to be up and running for 12 months. The company had to be on CRO for 12 months. And for Slate, it was 36 months. That's gone now. So in theory, a new company can apply for a Slate, for a slate uh, funding um, because it's all based on your experience criteria. So it's based on the experience of the people in the company. Um, so, so there are a few, few changes there um, all right across the board. So going into Slate, European Slate, um, yeah. So this is again is to allow European producers to scale up, diversify, innovate, and solidify their position in the market. The deadline for this is a little bit sooner because it's quite similar to before. And uh, the deadline for this is August twenty fifth. So um, summer holidays will be will be done with um, working on your applications. So again, like before, development of three to five um, projects for cinema, TV, or digital platforms, and then a short film again is included by emerging talent. The emerging talent this time before it didn't specify, but now it's that it's director. They're focusing on directors, uh, and they can also be included in sleep, but it's not mandatory. So it's changed slightly as well because now it's a lump sum. 
funding, which makes it a lot easier. Um, so, and then it's a lump sum depending on the genre. So for a creative doc, for a one-off it's 30,000 and for a series 35,000. So you could have a slate of five documentary series um, and apply for, if my math is correct, it's a 175 um, plus 10,000 for, for a short film. So, so that's the way they're working on it, they're breaking it down. So you could have a mix of fiction and documentary um, in, in there, it just, it all depends on, on the genre, it's about what you're gonna be applying for. Um, and the duration for the creative pro projects is the same as in the code of element. So in terms of slate, similar to the European code of element, but you must have produced two um, projects and distributed in at least three countries. And again, the personal credit can, can come into play here. So that's development for the TV and online content, which is the um, which is the production TV production. Now it's online production as well. Um, this is this has also changed as well. This is to produce high quality programming uh, aimed at wide international distribution. Um, it is international distribution, of course, would be very strong European strategies across all of these schemes. But they are looking at going beyond beyond Europe. So again, the deadline for this is August twenty fifth, twenty twenty one. There's lots of deadlines that week. Um, because of the delay in in um, in getting this up and running, so yeah, it'll be it'll be a busy week. Uh, so for this one, they've changed it quite. It used to be three broadcasting companies that had to be you had to have um, a contract with. Now you only need to have two uh, from two different countries participating in the media strand. So it could be Ireland and somewhere else, um, not the UK, unfortunately. Uh, so broadcasters' involvement must be supported by contracts or signed binding letters of commitment. Now, with this, a minimum of 40% of financing must be guaranteed from third-party sources. So it's only 40% now as opposed to 50%, so that's good. But like before, and this clause hasn't changed, uh, the minimum of 50% of the total estimated production financing must come from countries participating in the media strand. So if there is a, for example, like if there is, and this, this is affecting, you know, uh, productions across Europe, because if, you have a production that you just say you're working with with BBC um, and they're putting in more than 50% of the funding, it's not going to be eligible. Um, so, and a lot of companies, a lot of like animation companies, a lot of companies do have their headquarters in the UK that uh, producers will be used to contracting with. So this is going to be an issue. So we're still, we're still, we're still working through this one. And uh, so the funding available for a creative documentary is a maximum of 15% of the budget with ceiling for, for 300,000 for creative doc. So the other way, so the training programs um, are still here. So there is, this is a way that, that everybody can still get involved for, for Irish people and from people from Northern Ireland because the in the remit for, in the contracts that, that training programs have with Brussels, they said like there is, you can have like at least at the moment it's 20%, of participants from outside Europe. Um, and then I know with the new program going going forward, it's going to be up to 30%. So you can still access these programs depending on what the pro different programs decide. Some programs might decide that they just want European participants, but but there is there is that as well factor. So you can look into that, but those companies are those programs are still going to be available for you guys. So in terms of markets as well, um same thing, you know, that as long as the markets, you know, cover 15 countries, 15 different countries from the media strand, um, you know, it, it's open to all, as you all know, because I'm sure you all go to Berlin Isle anyway, and will continue to go. Um, so so that is one thing. The only thing with, returns to, with regards to the media stands. Um, so the media stands is funded by Creative Europe to, to, you know, to, give, to give discounts and, and to help producers. Um, it at these markets, but uh, but it's European companies that that they need. So even though you you be have Irish passport, um, it's an Irish citizenship. It's still um, it's still focused on the companies. So that is a very quick overview. Um, so I'm at the desk in our, in in Dublin. There's Evelyn who is in Galway, um, and then there's Katie and Eva who are working on the culture side of the program, um, and they're based in the Arts Council. So get in touch. We will be doing, um, like Francesca, we'll be doing webinars. We'll be doing, um, sending out a lot of information, especially once everything gets gets launched and off the ground. And we are there to help with um, any applications and anything that um, that you need.
so uh so thank you and any questions just let me know and i'm just going to perfect thanks orla wow it's a huge amount of information that both of you have given out here so yes where that you know this was a whi whistle stop tour literally of both of these funds i mean both are relatively new funds so um in this context i mean you have to take the creative europe new strands as new and kind of need to mm -hmm. approach in that respect and as we know with, with the uk global screen fund it is an absolutely new fund it's a pilot year so again um, it's a case of getting to know all the, the different corners and how all this kind of works together. I have a question for you, Orla, just about, you know, you did talk about um, a company being registered to the CRO. Is there a definition of what that company uh, needs to be? Is it, you know, an, an office operating within the region or or is it, you know, this idea of a postal address versus, an, you know, an office? So just is there any <laughs> clarity around that? <laughs> They're, 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 I mean, it's within, within legal, like you have, it has to be registered with CRO, it has to be a European audiovisual company, I mean, that's why, and you have to have, it's an audiovisual production company that you need to be registered as. Um, okay. Beyond that, and once you have an address, I mean, it, it depends on the rules with CRO. So once they're, they're happy with, with the legal requirements of the, the, of the national uh, registration. So, um, so, so it, it depends on, on how you, you approach the CRO with that. Um, now there is, and because of the shareholders, it's the, the big thing with, with it is that at least 50% have to be European shareholders. So for a company with Northern Irish shareholders and that, that wouldn't be an issue. So that's, um, that's and plus the fact that if anybody's thinking about it and um, setting up a company that, uh, that that thing of having to be up and running for 36 months or for 12 months, that that's gone now for the schemes, which, which is great. So, um, so yes, so that might, that may help. That, that may have been a slightly leading question, but you can probably understand why I asked it in that sense <laughs> with the time period gone um, in, in terms of how long mm. to be established. So uh, yes, I'm sure people will come back to you on that uh, and see yes. the clarity around that. Um, I suppose the first thing I'd ask for you guys is, um, I know, Francesca, you have two very live deadlines at the moment, or yours are coming thick and fast at us. What can people do now? I mean, again, I was going to say to prepare, which is which is not right in some ways, but what hints and tips do you have for people to uh, navigate the system? Again, your some of your deadlines, Orla, are a little bit further out in terms of November. What can we start doing now to kind of lay the ground and um, to be in a good position to have strong applications for to meet those deadlines? I think from from our point of view, and it probably aligns with Francesca as well, is that um, it, it's the big thing is is to know your company and to be very very clear on who you are and the type of projects that you want to do and i'm thinking from a you know if you're if you're applying for slate um with for projects side for the co-development and for the tv um content scheme and I, as well for slate is make sure that you have your information for your your project that you know what your project is that you know what it is that you have your strategies very very clear um clearly laid out and I think even even working on that and thinking about the, the projects that you have and again you know it, it's if, if there's any international interest in these projects um because it, there are you know it is an international scheme they both are so it, it's um so it's any international interest at all in the projects will go a long way um mm. to, to for yeah for the schemes and for you Francesca have you any tips about preparing your application and maybe you know, maybe some people won't be ready to meet these deadlines that are coming up, but are hopeful of, you know, early deadlines, perhaps in 2022 or when the pilot is, you know, what can we start doing now to prepare projects to be, you know, in good contenders for the funds? Sure. Um, yeah, I think for each strand, it's slightly different. So for the distribution strand, we obviously have a deadline coming up at the end of this month. Um, that is really targeted at films that are going to be launched and taken to um, markets in the autumn. So if you, you've got a, if you, one of your titles, one of your films is sort of has been picked up by a sales agent and, and is going to be kind of taken um, to a market, then let them know that there is support available. We've done lots of outreach with lots of different sales agents, but they may not have picked up on it that they're eligible for this. So yeah, do let them know. Um, for the business development strand, 
we are yeah it is it's it's about having those strategies in place we're looking for long-term strategies for that one even though it is a pilot year the activity is going to be funded over three years um so it's, it's about having having that clear kind of um business strategy that's going to get you from point a to point b kind of in your mind already um i think you're going to need to work on that quite quickly in order to have enough material ready um to apply for the the deadline in july um, and then for co-production, because it's a pilot fund, I think we are really looking for those kind of ripe and ready projects. You know, you have to have 60% of your finance already confirmed. You have to have UK financing. Um, so yeah, it is that particular deadline it is the projects that are kind of ready to go. Um, we are hoping to bring back um, the deadlines for another round, um, probably in the autumn. The decision on that hasn't been taken yet as to what that will look like. I think it's all going to depend on the kind of demand that we see in this first round of funding. And we've kind of kept things quite fluid because we, you know, there's a seven million pound pot, but we purposely haven't kind of allocated a specific amount to each strand because we want to kind of test the waters and see where the demand is and be able to kind of move money around within the fund should um, certain areas have more kind of need than others. Um, so. Yeah, hopefully we will be bringing them back. Um, it will probably be this year if we do so, because we have to kind of wrap everything up before the end of um, March next year. But um, yeah, do keep an eye out for that. I think the interesting is there's money to be spent and spent quickly and soon. So we can jump on that. It's a big thing. Absolutely. The thing that has come through to me, having listened to both of you in your presentations, and something maybe that people can think about early is looking at particularly the legal documents and the legal requirements to make sure that, you know, your companies, you tick all those boxes or, you know, meet the checklist there because the last thing you want to do is do a lot of work prepping maybe on the creator side and, and collaborations and then to kind of lose out in terms of technicality. So even mm -hmm. things, ensuring your company is properly registered through the CRO, listed as an audiovisual company, your shareholders, maybe just doing some of that due diligence now early days so that it doesn't become a headache you know, in the run up to the deadline and making sure that you're aware of legal questions. That's just something that's yeah. popped to me. Because again, absolutely. Yeah, no, we do. We have checklists in each set of our guidelines. And as well, before you even start the form, you're asked to kind of go through that checklist and make sure that you're applying to it all. So um, yeah, that's one. the first thing to bear in mind is, is check your eligibility and, and come to us if you've got any questions about that, because we're happy to kind of explain things to you or kind of see if, if things fit. Mm -hmm. And then for us, the, the, like, there's a separate document now. There's a separate template. There's a few different templates now that you're going to be able to fill in. Uh, but there's a separate one specifically for shareholders and specifically for the breakdown of your company as well. So it's one thing about having it registered in the portal. But then they also want to see exactly who the shareholders are, nationality, if there are any other direction. So it, it, there's a lot more um, focus on that this time than there was before. So, yeah. But that's stuff that you can do early and just have done. Yeah. You know what I mean? So again, something just to be mindful of. Not that anybody has a for half an hour these days, but it's probably something just to think about, I would say, and, and to prep because we all go running towards deadlines mindlessly sometimes. And, and you know, it's it's the night before you're up on to pulling the all nighter before. Um, I'm going to ask a very obvious question, actually, since I have the two of you sitting here. And, you know, these funds are exclusive in a way. Um, you know, we've got UK, Ireland, UK, Ireland. How do you mm potentially see or is there a way that you think that we can work together Northern Ireland UK they said the four regions within the UK plus um Southern Ireland is do you see ways that that we can as co-producers this is the, the challenge here I suppose because naturally in Ireland we co-produce first and foremost with the UK be it our brothers and sisters in Northern Ireland or Scotland or Wales or or, or England have you do you see a way that these projects can still work and um, capitalise on on both pots of, of available project funding, or perhaps no? I'll go to the first um, one. Maybe. Yeah, I think um, in in terms of, of of UK partnerships, I mean, you know, to be honest, for for Creative Europe for years, like if we had a UK Irish co production, that was it. Um, you would you wouldn't get a huge amount of points. In, in Creative Europe, I mean, it wasn't considered pan-European anyway. So people were always, you know, working with the UK, but always had another, you know, we're working with somebody else as well. So that that situation can still work. And I, you know, I was talking to Francesca and the business development um, fund of that global fund. 
um, there, it, there, you know, there could be a slight way that we could work together, like that companies would be able to work together and to access to um, through them through a slate company, perhaps so that a company in the UK could be a minority producer of um, of a project in a slate coming from Ireland. Um, and maybe that that could work. I think all the planets would have to align to um, to 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 work on that. But it it is possible. I think. Um, yeah, I think it is. It's possible. I mean, you know, the 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 audience is still. It's and the market is in the UK is so important for us mm -hmm. and so important for Europe that it's still it would look on would be looked on favorably in the applications once there is a strong European strategy as well. But I mm -hmm. think, you know, having that, that UK audience as well is still, it's still very important. So. And, and you, Francesca, I know you, you know, there's a lot about new markets. I mean, you can, like, is Ireland a new market? So are UK Irish co-productions, you know, interesting in, in terms particularly of the international co-production fund? They absolutely are. I mean, it is, uh, there's new markets, but it's also strengthening ties with it existing markets they're the kind of we, we don't want to lose sight of that in the co-production funding so absolutely that could um that wouldn't rule out an, a uk irish co-production or a co-production with uk Ireland and other partners um i think there is potential maybe for the co-production funding for tv to to fit maybe with the media tv um mm -hmm. funding um, obviously, the, the UK element couldn't be more than 50%, but maybe there's scope there if your financing plan works for an animation or a documentary to, to kind of access both funding, it might be possible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, absolutely, we're not ruling out uh, Irish co-productions at all. Mm. Great. Um, I'm not sure if there's any questions coming in, so I'm just going to keep asking them until somebody else shouts. But um, so, so yeah, I think you know that, that that's that's great because again, I think that's been one of the things that that people maybe have been wondering about with with the funds, particularly the UK Ireland potential for co-production and how that will work with Creative Europe versus the 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 Global Screen Fund as well. And then you know, any tips, particularly for documentaries, um, given you know this is the the, the Doc Ireland, um. I know, like having worked on projects in my previous life, like Mattress Men and stuff, you know, that like 25,000 kind of almost like seed funding for them was a game changer, you know, in a budget of, of that scale and size. So um, what kind of documentaries, you know, fit best? What are the tips that you can give documentary filmmakers in terms of putting together their financing and in terms of um, securing funding? You know, where where what should they be thinking about? Um, that's a big question, Sarah. Mm. So, um, I'm here so to ask difficult questions. Yes, exactly. Mattress Man was a great uh, media funded um, documentary, yeah. but yes, then that 25 grand did um, was a game changer. And I think that though that funding does help to focus on the development, and it does like you know, projects that that do fo have um, support in the development phase, like it, it's 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 massive for them now the, the only thing with, with creative europe now is that the, the first day of principle can't be before 10 months they, they're from the deadline so it's it's they have sort of pushed it out a little bit which is difficult for for um documentary producers that we know we just you know they are it, it, that, can, that can be tough um it's a uh, yeah, I I think again the training programs are very important. The markets are very important. Um, for from a European point of view, I know EDN was there before and not there now. Um, so that that was, but there's still there's you know between so and I know Sheffield is still there in the UK, but like on the you know on our side, it's the, it's this, it's the meat market. Um, it's 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 then it's you know, on the European level, then it's Sunnyside the Dock, it's uh, Docks Barcelona, it's you know there are a lot of markets out there. Where you can build those partnerships, um, and for Creative Europe now it is all about collaboration and it's all about partnerships. Um, so even though you don't need to have a co-production in place, you sort of helps. So you know for 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 Slate and for the TV scheme, so it 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 does help. So it it really is about building those partnerships and going to the markets and training. So mm -hmm. what do you think, Francesca? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for, for both sides of the Irish too, that's just so important, isn't it? Just reaching out to Europe and meeting those people and, and, and 
building your networks that way. Um, mm -hmm. I would add just in terms of what makes a good project for us, um, these funds are quite different to other BFI funds mm -hmm. in that they're not um, necessarily looking at the kind of creative elements of a project. It's more about assessing kind of the exportability and, and the kind of potential for generating revenues and things like that. So it's, it's not that someone's going to be taking a kind of um, creative um, assessment of your application. It is more about kind of what the project can do for you kind of commercially. Mm -hmm. And I think I think from Creative Europe side as well, where there is that, you know, creative element. Um, but what they really rely on is that if they see that an international producer or distributor or sales aid is interested in the project and that they know there is an audience for it outside of Europe, um, so or outside of Ireland or Northern Ireland, that they are the projects that that um will get funded. That's projects that can travel, it's the creative documentaries that can travel. So it might be a, a a a story, a localized story, but it's it's it it hits a nerve, and that it that's a story that that can travel, which is really important. Great, and just Orla, um, from that practical point of view, I know yourself and Evelyn were always very available to advise people, um, on their applications pre deadline. I mean, I know you're not yeah. part of the assessment process. Will that still be the case? You're still um, able yeah, to kind of advise them on their actual application before it gets submitted. Yes, on their actual application, and I'm sure we'll be hearing a lot because the the, the application process has completely changed. Mm -hmm. um, it's all through the funding and tenders portal now, so it's it will be tough. So we do expect a lot of phone calls going. Uh, what's this about? Mm -hmm. So, but we will be doing webinars. So we'll be having links. To, Brussels are doing an awful lot of webinars on these calls um, and on how to apply as well. So you'd be webinared out if you aren't already. Um, so, but but there is support there, and yet yeah, we can get out the red pen with the application yeah. before you submit. Can't guarantee anything, but we can yeah. definitely help. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Francesca, do you have a red pen system or is it just, we can answer your questions, but maybe not be able to advise on the actual application itself? Exactly, yeah. We're happy to answer any questions, but we wouldn't be giving you that kind of pre-application level of, of support that the Creative Europe Desk would be doing. Absolutely. Well, I think the tip is to engage with you guys as early as possible within the process. Mm -hmm. Um, in order to kind Definitely. of be able to negotiate your way around these schemes. And I think the earlier you can discuss projects, at least to understand whether they're eligible or not, may save you some time and uh, brain power in, in thinking out your strategies. You know, as I always say, um, documentaries are, I've said this before, are the, the easiest films to start, but the hardest to finish. And often that is just because of the financing journey that everybody goes on within mm -hmm. creative documentary world in particular um, so it's great to, to have this level of detail and information. Um, and I think, you know, I think we're going to sign off now. We've, we've done a full hour. We realize everybody's going to need a cup of tea or maybe something stronger after this when they try to download and process all this information. But I want to say a huge thank you for Mila Mahabev to Orla, August, August Francesca. And again, a huge thank you to Roisin and Stuart for the invitation to be here today. And congr congratulations to them and Michelle and all the team at Docs mm -hmm. Ireland work that they're doing at the moment and um, i hope you've enjoyed this session you can seek us out on social media or other platforms if you want to talk to any of the three of us um, at any time and i said thank you for tuning in i'm um, and engaging with us on this session so slán live galer thanks okay.